Hello everyone, I am Manoj Kimire. I am security engineer of Stupa as well as freelance malware researcher. For today's video, I will be showcasing you all the reverse engineering I had done of public ransomware. As we all know, ransomware has become a hot topic in the security domain. So for learning purpose, I have reversed Babuk ransomware. So to keep a brief introduction about Babuk ransomware. Babuk ransomware was first seen in early 2021, which attacked at least five big enterprises, including Washington DC Police Department. Babuk uses some techniques similar to County and Reveal ransomware. It uses SA-256 hashing, ChaCha-8 encryption, elliptic curve defi helmet key generation and exchange algorithm. At very first, I am going to demonstrate how Babuk works by executing in the virtual machine running Windows Server 2019. For this purpose, I have downloaded the malware from the malware bazaar link in the description. As soon as I execute the program, it begins to encrypt each and every files of system and leaving a note as how to restore your file.txt. Let's upload the executable in virus total and examining the report. Here we can see 57 security vendors and 5 sandboxes flag the file as malicious. Here in the name under the detail tab we can see that the ransomware is a Babuk ransomware with a different name. This confirms us that the file is a Babuk ransomware. For the attempt to reverse engineer malware, Ghidra, Redara, and Pinwak were used. The reverse repository can be found on our GitHub repository. The malware is a 32 bit portable executable which is not obfuscated at all. From the entropy level, we can examine that the file is not compressed as the maximum entropy reaches only 0.77 at offset value 25510. To begin with reversing, open the file in Ghidra. As we can see from the resource tree, the malware is not obfuscated or packed. The malware is in its original form. After then, let's examine the string section. When we take a look at strings, we see that there are bunch of services and processes hardcoded in the malware. In the string section, you can see a cmd command to delete the shadow copies which is suspicious and also there is a string indicating a ransomware note. On the other hand, there are other strings like functions name, encrypted file extension, file path which will be explained in detail in later part of the video. Ok, let's look at imports. In imports, I can see many imports to handle the services, execute a shell, reading or writing to a file. Yes, actually lots of imports are seen more often in ransomware. As you can see in screen, these are the some list of the imports done by the ransomware. To begin with, let's see the entry function in decompiler window. At very first, the malware checks for the argument provided through command line using the function get command line A. These are the functionalities of these arguments and if the parameter is null, the malware encrypt locally and then network. The malware is quite flexible with this command line argument to be set as per the attacker's intention and TTP and encrypting the mounted folder before or after the local disk. 
The ability to use the parameters provide attackers with a simple approach to encrypt network resources. Furthermore, the malware also appears to use the function set process shutdown parameters to set the shutdown level to zero. This forces an operating system to pop up a warning message during the process of shutdown so that the user need to trigger manual shutdown. The malware is developed to terminate all the services that are hardcoded in the malware using the function stopping services. And here are the list of the services that are hardcoded in the malware. Let's examine the stopping services function. We observe that the ransomware calls the service control manager using the function open sc manager a. This enumerates the status of the running services in the target system, retrieves the names and status of the each dependent service and sends the stop control to the dependent service using control service. And after this, let's examine the terminate process function present under the entry function. This function then proceeds to terminate the processes if running that are hardcoded in the malware as a result, it is also designed to terminate the dependent processes when required. Here are the list of the processes that are hardcoded in the malware. After this, let's examine the deleting shadow copies function under the entry function. This function deletes the shadow volume of the victim machine. To do so, it first check whether the target operating system is 32-bit or 62-bit using the function is WOW64 process in a dynamic shell. Then it calls WOW64 revert WOW64 FS redirection to disable and then enable the file system redirection. Then it calls shell execute W to execute the command to delete shadow volumes. After it calls SSS empty recycle bin F function to delete the content of the recycle bin. Under the entry function, these highlighted functions are used for the key generation for the purpose to encrypt the files. This RTL gen random function is used to generate four random buffers among which two are used as Chacha 8 keys and other two used as Chacha 8 nodes. Here I have summarized the encryption in a pictorial representation. After producing four random buffers, uh, the next action is to encrypt the second key using the first key and first nodes. And after that the first key is encrypted using encrypted second key and nodes. This encrypted first key is treated as the electric corp defi element private key for the victim machine. Then it generates victim ECDS public key using the private key. Again after that it generates a shared secret using the victim's private key and the author hardcoded public key. Shared secret is then passed to SSA 256 hashing algorithm to generate two chacha 8 keys to encrypt the files. In order to decrypt the files, it needed ECDS public key to generate shared secret key. So it saves the ECDS public key in the local directory. Then let's examine the encrypt main function presented under entry function. Bavok uses recursive technique to traverse directory and encrypt the files. It uses functions wnet open enum w and wnet enum resource w to start an enumeration of network resources or remote directory or existing connection. And inside directory traversing function, it uses the function find first file w and find next file w to source a directory for a file or subdirectory with a name that matches a specific name. And it creates a how to restore your file.txt to instruct the victim in paying the ransom and decrypt the files. To avoid encrypting the ransomware node or encrypted file, it check if the file name is how to restore your files.txt or the extension is underscore nist underscore k571 underscore using the function 
LSTRCMPW. The interesting about Bobuk ransomware is it only encrypts 16 directory layers deep. Files that are being used by some processes cannot be encrypted until the process leaves the file. In order to overcome this problem, Bobuk uses Windows Restart Manager to terminate the processes that are using those files. Uh, it uses the functions rm start session, rm register resource, rm get list, and finally terminate process to terminate the processes. Another interesting about Bubuk ransomware is uh, it divides the whole encryption of the files into two parts less than and greater than or equals to 41 MB using the function get file size ex. For the smaller size file, it mapped entirely and encrypted with cha cha 8 keys two times. And for the larger file, the entire file is divided into three equal chunks and first 10 MB of each chunks are encrypted two times using cha cha 8 keys.